Good. Um, so my name is Sergey. Uh, I'm a doctoral, doctoral student at the Alta University working on uh, computer vision problems. And in my spare time, I've been contributing to the CUDA infrastructure in Nix packages. And um, I've encountered Nix very recently, about three years ago, uh, and this is also my first NixCon. Today, I use Nix packages to deploy GPU accelerated software. Uh, such as PyTorch uh, and, and homegrown uh, visualization tools use, that use OpenJL. Uh, and uh, I think Nix is a, is a great tool for my tasks, but uh, I want to talk about friction. Uh, so I bring up OpenJL and CUDA because they are kind of special. Uh, so when you run a CUDA, a CUDA application, uh, when you, when you run a CUDA program, uh, you effectively run a normal host code, say x86-64, which uh, communicates with a so-called user space driver, uh, the libcuda so, and it uploads a device program written in some intermediate language for, to be scheduled for execution on, a, on an external device. And when you run an OpenGL application, you also run normal host code, which uh, uploads uh, uh, an intermediate language program uh, uh, and, and, and asks, the, asks the driver to compile it on the fly uh, and schedule for execution, possibly on, a, on an external device. And let's make a pause here. Uh, we uh, want to use different drivers on different machines, even when the host portion of the program stays the same. Uh, there's, a, there's, there's a tool to do that without rebuilds, it's called dynamic linkage. And uh, what, this means on, uh, what this means on mainstream Linux distributions is, it doesn't mean anything, it's, it's, it's dynamic linkage all the way. However, on, uh, on Nix, uh, Nix makes dynamic linkage static uh, by, by recording the absolute store paths uh, as, as hints for the dynam dynamic loader search routines. Uh, uh, so what we do with Nix packages is we unmake the determinism provided by Nix by deploying the driver libraries in an impure location. Uh, and in principle, we're not forced into that choice. We, we could link directly to the, to the driver without causing mass rebuilds by using a technique called graphing. But the choice of today is we use this impure location. Uh, this may th th this works perfectly well on Nixos, uh, but it, it it makes things cumbersome on on Ubuntu and, and Arch Linux. Uh, for one thing, uh, uh, if you want to use a driver uh, provided by the Ubuntu system or something, uh, you 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 can use the LD library path uh, environment var variable to override the hints uh, recorded by Nix, but you have to do that carefully uh, uh, because you only want to override the driver bit. Uh, otherwise, it, it, it's a straight path to break things. There's, there are tools to automate this process. For example, Numtide's Nix jail host, which finds all the relevant libraries and exposes them and only them to the Nix built software. Uh, and, uh, Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, meanwhile, software built for FHS uh, just works on Ubuntu, uh, at least most of the time. You can, you, you can translate the uh, horrible peep install commands into, into a concise Nix, which, 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 Nix expression, which does look neat. Uh, uh, this one, however, would only uh, provide you PyTorch that works for a uh, uh, with one on a CPU, uh, if you want to use CUDA, you have to explicitly enable that, which will which will trigger a rebuild. And this won't work either because you have to deploy those driver libraries at the agreed location. There's a Nixos module that automates that, and you can also save yourselves the expensive rebuilds by using an official binary cache. Uh, which, by the way, this one is provided uh, by Domains Cachex, uh, which has been extremely helpful. You can also run FHS applications on Nixos rather smoothly by using NixLD, uh, which deploys a patched uh, dynamic loader for the FHS applications. Uh, but all this time, the FHS on FHS still does kind of just work. So. Uh, there are many more reasons not to use Nix for deep learning, which I'll have to rush through. Uh, so, so why Nix? Uh, uh, 
not, not so long ago, Twitter got all excited about a technical report published by Facebook about their experience training a large language model, which has been a very, it's a very prolonged effort involving a lot of people. And the interesting thing about re that report is that most of it doesn't talk about research issues per se. It rather talks about the technical difficulties uh, that people face through the process. And some of these difficulties, they, they should stand out immediately to, to any Nix user because they're exactly the kind of problems Nix users don't have. Uh, another reason to use Nix is because uh, uh, the moment you step away from, from well-trodden paths like x86-64, for example, if you want to use PyTorch on an NVIDIA Jetson device, people, you might see people distribute software like that, and yes, this is like official NVIDIA thing. Uh, so, uh, to sum up, uh, anything goes as long as you run NixOS, uh, and you're kind of on your own if, 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 you're, if you're using FHS. Okay, um, I'm rushing through, rushing through again, sorry, I didn't have time to prune. Uh, so, uh, we've got several people now uh, maintaining the CUDA, inf several volunteers maintaining CUDA infrastructure in Nix packages. Uh, just one more. 30 seconds. Uh, we've got uh, an entire full-time employee of Twig, Connor Baker, uh, that, that works full-time full on CUDA packages. We've got plan to run uh, uh, a long-term CI to, to build and test CUDA, CUDA applications. And uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot more stuff uh, coming up. Uh, we'll be uh, happy to chat about those. Sorry I went over time. And I used the wrong, key the wrong keyboard all the time. Yeah, thank you.